Today is June 17th. My name is Hunter, and we are on a journey into the loving heart of God. We meet here each day on this podcast to read from the Revised Common Lectionary, to reflect, and to pray. We start today in Psalm 53. Then we go to 1 Samuel 13, verses 23, through chapter 14, verse 23. And we'll read in Galatians chapter 6, 11 through 18. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 53. For the choir director, a meditation, a psalm of David. Only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. God looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. But no, all have turned away. All have become corrupt. No one does good, not a single one. Will those who do evil never learn? They eat up my people like bread and wouldn't think of praying to God. Terror will grip them. Terror like they have never known before. God will scatter the bones of your enemies. You'll put them to shame, for God has rejected them. Who will come from Mount Zion to rescue Israel? When God restores his people, Jacob will shout with joy, and Israel will rejoice. Psalm 61 For the choir director, a psalm of David to be accompanied by stringed instruments. O God, listen to my cry, hear my prayer. From the end of the earth I cry to you for help. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the towering rock of safety. For you are my refuge and fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Let me live forever in your sanctuary, safe beneath the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me an inheritance reserved for those who fear your name. Add many years to the life of the king. May his years span the generations. May he reign under God's protection forever. May your unfailing love and faithfulness watch over him. Then I will sing praises to your name forever as I fulfill my vows each day. 1 Samuel 13, starting in verse 23. The pass at Michmash had meanwhile been secured by a contingent of the Philistine army. One day Jonathan said to his armor-bearer, Come on, let's go over to where the Philistines have their outposts. But Jonathan did not tell his father what he was doing. Meanwhile, Saul and his six hundred men were camped on the outskirts of Gibeah around the pomegranate tree at Migron. Among Saul's men was Ahijah the priest, who was wearing the ephod, the priestly vest. Ahijah was the son of Ichabod's brother, Ahitub, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord who had served at Shiloh. No one realized that Jonathan had left the Israelite camp. To reach the Philistine outpost, Jonathan had to go down between two rocky cliffs that were called Bozes and Sena. The cliff on the north was in front of Michmash, and the one on the south was in front of Geba. Let's go across to the outpost of those pagans, Jonathan said to his armor-bearer. Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few. Do what you think is best, the armor-bearer replied. I am with you completely, whatever you decide. All right, then, Jonathan told him. We will cross over and let them see us. If they say to us, stay where you are, we'll kill you, then we'll stop and not go up to them. But if they say, come on up and fight, then we will go up. That'll be the Lord's sign that he will help us defeat them. When the Philistines saw them coming up, they shouted, Look, the Hebrews are crawling out of their holes. Then the men from the outpost shouted to Jonathan, Come on up here and we'll teach you a lesson. Come on, climb right behind me, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, for the Lord will help us defeat them. So they climbed up using both hands and feet, and the Philistines fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer killed those who were coming behind them. They killed some twenty men in all, and their bodies were scattered over about a half an acre. Suddenly panic broke out in the Philistine army, both in the camp and in the field, including even the outposts and raiding parties. And just then, an earthquake struck, and everyone was terrified. 
Saul's outlooks in Gibeah of Benjamin saw a strange sight. The vast army of Philistines began to melt away in every direction. Call the roll and find out who's missing, Saul ordered. And when they checked, they found that Jonathan and his armor bearer were gone. Then Saul shouted to Ahijah, Bring the ephod here. For at that time, Ahijah was wearing the ephod in front of the Israelites. But while Saul was talking to the priests, the confusion in the Philistine camp grew louder and louder. So Saul said to the priest, Never mind, let's get going. Then Saul and his men rushed out to the battle and found the Philistines killing each other. There was terrible confusion everywhere. Even the Hebrews who had previously gone over to the Philistine army revolted and joined in with Saul, Jonathan, and the rest of the Israelites. Likewise, the men of Israel who were hiding in the hill country of Ephraim joined the chase when they saw the Philistines running away. So the Lord saved Israel that day. And the battle continued to rage even beyond Beth Avon. Galatians 6, starting in verse 11. Notice what large letters I use when I write these closing words in my own handwriting. Those who are trying to force you to be circumcised want to look good to others. They don't want to be persecuted for teaching that the cross of Christ alone can save. And even those who advocate circumcision don't keep the whole law themselves. They only want to be circumcised so they can boast about it and claim you as their disciples. As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified, and the world's interest in me has also died. It doesn't matter whether we have been circumcised or not. What counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation. May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle. They are the new people of God. From now on, don't let anyone trouble me with these things. For I bear in my body the scars that show I belong to Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. And now let us take some time for silent prayer and reflection. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, Pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your grateful children, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. And above all, 
for your immeasurable love and your redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and the hope of glory. Lord, we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by the giving up of ourselves for your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for spending another day with us at the Daily Lectionary Podcast. Let me also invite you to join us at our flagship podcast, The Daily Radio Bible, where we read through the entire Bible over the course of a year. But more than that, what we desire most is to see and be transformed by the God who is love. Find out more at dailyradiobible.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Now let's go forward in God's joy. Let His joy be your strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved.